Now, let us study about the irreversible and reversible reactions. We know that when magnesium ribbon burns in the presence of atmospheric oxygen, it forms a white powder of magnesium oxide. When silver nitrate is added to sodium chloride, it forms a white curd like precipitate. When marble chips are added to dilute hydrochloric acid, then carbon dioxide is liberated. Notice in all these reactions, stable products are formed. We cannot reconvert these products into the original reactant. Hence, we can say that these reactions are irreversible reactions. Natural processes also show the example of irreversible processes such as water flowing down the hill, wind blowing from high pressure to low pressure or flow of heat from hot body to cold body. In all these cases, in the similar conditions, it is not easy to revert these processes. So, they represent irreversible reactions. From this, we can conclude that the reaction in which the product cannot be reconverted into original reactants are called as irreversible processes. In some reactions, both forward reaction and backward reactions takes place simultaneously. Here, the product formed reacts with each other to give original reactants. These reactions are called as reversible reactions. A reversible reaction is represented by two half arrows pointing in opposite directions. Now, we will learn about equilibrium and attainment of equilibrium. To understand these, consider the following reversible reaction. In a forward reaction, A reacts with B to form product C and D. This proceeds with high velocity. After the formation of the product C and D, they react to form reactants. This is known as backward reaction. Now the forward reaction slows down and the backward reaction occurs with high velocity. After some time, the forward and backward reactions occur with the same velocity. Now we can say that the reaction has attained equilibrium. This equilibrium is a dynamic equilibrium. Thus, we can say that when rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reaction, then a system is said to be in the state of equilibrium. This is represented with the help of the following graph. We already know that when concentration of reactant is altered, the rate of reaction also changes. Let us now take a look on whether the state of equilibrium is influenced by change in concentration. Let us understand this by performing an experiment. Are you ready to go? Take a long test tube in which take 1 gram of bismuth chloride. It's a white solid. To dissolve this, add 5 ml of water and shake. A milky white suspension is now seen in the test tube. This white suspension is bismuth oxychloride and hydrochloric acid. The presence of acid can be tested by a blue litmus paper. It will turn red. Now add more water to the suspension. You will notice the turbidity of the solution increases. It represents that more bismuth chloride is converted into bismuth oxychloride. This shows that rate of forward reaction is increased now. The equilibrium is shifted to the right. Now add 2 ml of hydrochloric acid. You will notice that the turbidity of the solution disappears. This means that bismuth oxychloride now changes to bismuth chloride. This shows that the rate of backward reaction increases if we increase the concentration of product. Hence, the equilibrium has shifted from the left. Potassium chromate solution is yellow in color. In the presence of HCl, the color turns to orange. Then add excess HCl. The reaction mixture turns deep orange. 
indicating the increase of rate of forward reaction here the equilibrium is shifted right then add 2 ml of water to the above solution the orange color fades out now the equilibrium is shifted to the left thus we can say that in a reversible reaction increase in the concentration of the reactants favors forward reaction in a reversible reaction increase in the concentration of the product favors backward reaction let us understand the effect of pressure on the state of equilibrium nitrogen dioxide is reddish brown gas and nitrogen tetraoxide is a colorless gas two molecules of nitrogen dioxide react with each other to give one molecule of nitrogen tetraoxide we all know gas molecule occupies large space according to boyle's law pressure is directly proportional to volume so when we apply pressure gas molecules are compressed in the reaction between nitrogen dioxide to form nitrogen tetraoxide there is a decrease in the number of molecules of reactants to product so in this reaction the rate of forward reaction is increased with the increase in the pressure that is equilibrium is shifted to the right students the state of equilibrium is not always affected by pressure let me explain with the help of the following reaction in the reaction between hydrogen and iodine to form hydrogen iodide there is no net increase or net decrease in the number of molecules of reactants and products upon the increase of the pressure there will be an increase in both the forward as well as backward reaction thus we can say that when number of moles of reactant and product are same then equilibrium remains unaffected under the influence of pressure so students through this module we are familiar with the rates of reaction and types of reaction like slow medium and fast reaction we have also learnt about the various factors that affect the rate of reaction like concentration catalyst temperature and pressure besides also learning about reversible and irreversible reactions of equilibrium so bye for now till we meet again with another interesting concept